Before the Second World War, the airship was no stranger to military and naval service. German Zeppelins had been used to bomb mainland Britain during the Great War, and both the British and German navies had also used them for naval patrolling between 1914 and 1918. In the 1920s and 30s, the airships would see a golden age, with behemoths like the Graf Zeppelin making intercontinental travel a reality for the great and the good. When the Hindenburg caught fire, while attempting to dock in New Jersey in May 1937, it seemed the airship had had its day. The United States Navy has made every effort to develop the dirigible as a naval scout. This, the giant Macon, carries five small planes, which can be launched in the air to defend her from the attacks of enemy aircraft. The dirigible's duty is to find the position and report it to the flagship. The US Navy had given the operational usage of blimps serious thought just before the outbreak of war in Europe in 1939. As the war flowed into its second year in 1940, Congress put into action the 10,000 Planes Act. Within it, it stated, the President of the United States is hereby authorised to acquire or construct naval airplanes and non-rigid lighter-than-air craft and spare parts and equipment, including 850 airplanes for the Naval Reserve, and a number of useful non-rigid lighter-than-air craft at a total of no more than 48. With this, the airship programme was put into effect, with the craft being put into the task of anti-submarine warfare. One of the types of airship used by the Navy for this purpose was the K-Class Blimp, built by the Goodyear Aerospace Company. The first ships flew in 1938, and in October 1940, the Navy ordered a contract to Goodyear for six of these K-Class Blimps. A total of 134 were manufactured over two decades by the company for the Navy and for civilian use. The Blimp's usage by the Navy was outlined by the Chief of Naval Operations. The patrol type non rigid airship now being constructed for this program is the K class, 416,000 cubic feet volume, 215 feet length, and 77 feet overall height. Carrying a crew of three officers and five enlisted men, these blimps with a military load of two to four depth bombs plus machine guns will have a cruising range of some 15,000 to 2,000 nautical miles and a cruising speed of 45 to 60 knots. The obvious logical uses for these ships are in the detection and the attack on mines and submarines, and in the escort, when desirable, of convoys through the coastal shipping lanes. The blimps would also use an onboard radar system to help with the detection of enemy submarines. The blimps were designed to observe, lay mines, and work in tandem with convoys to hunt for U-boats within their patrol radius, not to actively fight the enemy, in open combat. However, there would be one known instance of an attack made by a blimp on a U-boat in 1943. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe. On the night of the 18th of July 1943, airship K-74 was taking part in a night patrol off of the southeast coast of Florida. Her crew was aided in their search for enemy vessels by an almost full moon that night. Her crew of eight was helmed by Lieutenant Nelson Grills, a declassified fleet airship Atlantic Bulletin from August 1943 details the moment the crew first became aware of enemy activity that night. The K-74 was flying at 500 feet altitude on a track of 189 degrees true and at a ground speed of 47 knots. At that moment, a radar blip was detected. That blip would turn out to be U-134, which was on its ninth patrol the submarine having started war patrolling the coasts of Norway in 1941. She had also sunk a merchant ship SS Scapa Flow in November 1941, as well as two others before her encounter with the blimp in 1943. The German submarine was above the water when the crew of the American blimp spotted her. One half mile to the port of the airship, a submarine was seen perfectly silhouetted in bright moonlight. Lieutenant Grills went against procedure and did not report the sighting of U-134 and started an attack run on the submarine. As the blimp bore down on its target, U-134 swung left at a 90 degree angle, 
but the blimp pressed on, then at a range estimated to be 250 yards. The U-boat opened up on the blimp with its deck guns. The US crew replied in kind, with aviation machinists first mate class Garnet Eckert firing back with the M2 Browning. However, the German firepower proved to be deadly accurate, and a round from their 20mm deck gun tore a hole in the blimp's gas bag. A final attempt was made to destroy U-134 with deck charges. Two were dropped close to the U-boat, but they failed to sink her. After this attack, K-74 caught fire, but the crew were able to keep the flames at bay. But the damage sustained for the U-boat was too great, and the blimp crashed into the sea at about midnight. The crew successfully escaped as it started to sink. Lieutenant Grills remained at the sinking wreckage to destroy valuable equipment and papers to stop them falling into enemy hands. He was then separated from the rest of the crew, who had floated out of sight. The rest of K-74's crew returned to the wreckage to use it to stay afloat. Aviation machinist mate second class Isidore Stessel had also drifted away from the crash, being a weak swimmer. The down crew were spotted at 7.45 in the morning on the 19th of July by a J-4F search plane. It then went to make contact with the nearby destroyer USS Dahlgren, which then started to make its way to the stricken crew. During this time, Stessel, who had taken in a large amount of seawater, was attacked by a shark. The rest of the crewmen linked up to defend themselves. Ensign Eversley reported seeing Stessel screaming as he was dragged under the water. He was the only American airship crewman to be killed during the Second World War. The Dahlgren finally located the surviving crew and had them aboard safely to around 10am in the morning. Lieutenant Grills was picked up by USS 647 nine hours later. Astonishingly, U-134 Captain Lieutenant Hans Gunther Brosen had managed to get alongside the sinking blimp and board it taking pictures, even taking a piece of the blimp's wreckage aboard his submarine. How he did this without the crew of K-74 seeing him, or the submarine pull alongside them, was a mystery. But the photos Brosin took were transferred to another U-boat before U-137 was sunk on the 27th of August 1943 by a Wellington bomber. There were no survivors. Thus marked the end of the K-74 incident. The fleet airship Atlantic Bulletin that documented the encounter was only declassified in 1958. Lieutenant Grills was considered for both a court-martial and a distinguished flying cross. Neither came to fruition, K-74 being the only K-class blimp lost to enemy action during the Second World War, but the last K-ship was retired by the US Navy from service in March 1959. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of RM Military History. Subscribe for more, and I'll catch you again in the next one.